How did it feel to get the phone call a little while ago? Yeah, it felt good. Um, like you know, this whole time I was like, I won't cry, but I was definitely fighting tears when the when the call finally came. So, um, you know, I think it's just a a surreal moment. You know, um, for everybody that's getting their name called, you know, to uh, all the you know sacrifices and you know the hard work and everything that you have to put in to, you know, just to be considered, let alone be picked. Um, it's definitely a you know a full circle kind of surreal moment. So. Um, it's hard, you know, not to be proud of yourself and uh, let those tears fall sometimes. Hey, Jalen, you've, uh, you've, if I remember correctly, you compared yourself before to Levante David's game. Uh, what is it about? Yeah. yeah, what is it about that game that you feel uh, is in, is in yours that you bring? Um, you know, uh, I mean, the biggest thing, I, you know, for him compared to other linebackers is just his ability to really, you know, roam the middle of the field, um, whether it's in coverage or you know, kind of dissecting plays um, from the snap. Um, you, you know, uh, offenses they get tricky, and uh, at, my, at linebacker you kind of gotta uh, anticipate a lot, or you know, be be one of those guys that kind of knows what's going on. And so I think Le Levante David does that well, um, and I feel like I do as well. Uh, I do it pretty good as well. So you know, just trying to run the field, whether you know, uh, I feel like I, I do pretty good in coverage. Um, I feel like I dissect plays really really well. So you know, I'm just looking to improve my game. Um, luckily, you know, now I got some guys to kind of, to you know, some vets to learn under, um, some great vets, absolutely, actually. So, you know, I'm really excited. Yeah, I was going to ask about that next. So you talked about um, instinct and play recognition and things like that. Now you get to be in a linebacker room with Demario Davis. How's that feel? Man, uh, it's crazy because, you know, like, uh, you know, since, like since he's been in the league, just watching him and um, understanding that he's, you know, uh, one of the top, you know, top three, you know, you could put him in that category as being one of the best linebackers in the league right now. So uh, for me, you know, understanding that my goal is to be right there, you know, where he's at. Um, I think that just, it means a lot. And um, I'm just glad that I get this opportunity um, and I can't wait to get in there and, you know, soak up everything like a sponge. So I'm excited. Are you aware that the Saints were looking at you? How was your kind of interaction with them throughout this process? Um, yeah, so we talked, uh, they came to my pro day. Um, and then, you know, I had a, a, a lot of feedback from their DM, um, after, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's crazy just that draft part and, you know, just sitting there and you don't really know, uh, you know, you hear, you hear these teams like you, you know, you know, and you just kind of sit there and wait. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I think the best thing is that no matter who picks you or, you know, no matter, um, who decides to get you, it's, it's always meant to be. And so. For me, I feel like the Saints wanted me, and um, I'm I'm just really grateful that they have been they've given me an opportunity to come out there, compete, um, you know, and earn my keep. So I'm just really excited to get that chance. Who did you meet with uh, with the Saints? Uh, I met with Coach Hodges. So uh, we had a good conversation. We watched some tape, um, and kind of just gave him my you know my backstory, um, and it, you know kind of went from there. I told him that. Uh, you know, I was ready to compete. Um, he, you know, they told me, you know, they're looking for me to be on special teams, um, getting that, you know, that LB room and compete and just, you know, do what I do what I can, do my part to help this team win. Jalen, what is your special teams experience and and in what roles have you gotten a lot of experience? Yeah, uh, I've done a lot of special teams throughout my, you know, my career at college. So uh, I'm I'm not really, you know, foreign or new to that. So I think for me, understanding that that's how you kind of get on that field and add value to yourself. Um, and then it, it could take you a long way. So I think for me, I already got a good mindset about, you know, special teams and, um, you know, and my ways of competing when I get there and, you know, get my get my feet on that grass. So I'm just looking to come in there and make a name for myself, um, whether it's special teams or, you know, just uh, helping the guys uh, elevate the room. So how have the changes in the new uh, kickoff rule? I don't know, have you been able to look into that very much? How does that impact? Your um, yeah, I think so. From my understanding, you know, the new rules allow uh, they're kind of like having bigger guys. So like guys my body size or, you know, you don't have to run down the field as much. So, you know, being able to get out there and play special teams uh, is huge. So um, I think the way they change it up, it kind of adds more value to linebackers and, um, you know, tight ends, those bigger bodies that can, you know, get off blocks and go make plays or, you know, making blocks. Jalen, how, how much pride do you take in where Texas was when you got there, where Texas was when you left? I take a lot of pride in it. Um, you know, for me, uh, you know, part of the reason for me coming back my senior year instead of declaring for the draft was because of that that progress and that that um, 
the elevation that I, I was a part of at Texas. And, you know, I felt like, you know, I wanted to come back and win. And so that's that's what I did. Uh, that's what we did. You know, we were able to turn that program around. Stark came in. He gave us the blueprint. You know, a lot of us listened. Um, and we took it, we took everything that they gave us and we kind of bought in and we were able to become successful off of it. Um, I haven't had a lot of a chance to watch you, but reading scouting reports, it seems like a lot of credit for your ability to dissect, diagnose. How much pride do you take in, in that being a strength of yours? Uh, can you say that again? I'm sorry. I, I said a lot of the scouting reports credit you for your ability to dissect, diagnose. How, how much pride do you take in that part of your game? Yeah, I, I take a lot of pride in, uh, um, you know, being a student of the game. Um, at linebacker, I feel like you got to be one of the smartest guys out there. Um, you know, especially uh, when they uh, when they trust you enough to, you know, if you're that green dot guy or you're the guy that's got to get the the rest of the defense ready. Um, and so I feel like me, um, you know, staying in that film room and watching film and uh, getting to understand offenses and just you know learning football um, and just being a student of the game, I think that helped me to be able to dissect plays and uh, kind of be a step ahead. Um, and that that actually you know helps helps with you know being sideline to sideline stuff like that, anticipating where the ball is going. Um, you know it it allows you to create turnovers and just you know be a playmaker. So uh, I think that's a huge part of my game and what I look to elevate. And I read somewhere that you keep a dick butt kiss card in your uh, wallet. What's the what's the origin of that story? Yeah, um, I mean if y'all lucky enough, I got it. Hold on, let me get in my wallet. <laughs> if y'all lucky enough, I think I got it in my wallet still. But yeah, uh, so. For me, it was just um, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to win a Dick Bucket. So uh, I was lucky enough to. I did a Panini. I did like this Panini car deal as an NIL thing, and and uh, I opened a package. And one of the cars that came out was a Dick Bucket. And like at the time, you know, um, Dick Bucket was like, you know, it was uh, getting that award was really like it was important to me, or you know, just being a, a finalist or whatever. So. Uh, and once I got the card, um, I was just—I thought it would be pretty cool just to keep it as a reminder of you know what I was trying to achieve, um, kind of like a motivational thing, something you know I can always look at, uh, you know, to keep me reminded about you know the the things that I'm trying to achieve, and uh, you know, for me, my biggest thing is I want to be you know one of the best linebackers. Um, when people think about linebackers, or when people think about me, it was like, man, he was a hell of a linebacker, you know, so, um. That's what this car represents, and it's just you know, it's just a reminder for me. Um, and I think it was pretty cool that the story got out and that people you know liked um, what I was doing or you know appreciated me for understanding the guys that come before me. And so, uh, like I was saying earlier, I'm a student of the game, so there's you know I watch so many linebackers, um, and so I'm just looking to build on you know the the great ones that have come before me. Uh, when it comes to uh, alignment in the second level, Mike Will Sam, where do you feel like you're you fit best even though you might be able to play all three um I would definitely say I'm Mike for sure um that's just where my heart is and you know, I've been I've been able to I played there um I'm a lot comfortable um you know just being in that that room in the field kind of that field general type of player um but honestly I feel like my mentality and uh you know the experience I've had playing linebacker I feel like I could play any position that they ask me to um it's it's, it's all it's all about mental so you know whatever they ask of you um, if you really, if you really had that mindset and uh, the determination, you could do anything. So, uh, wherever they want to put me, um, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, I just want to help the team win, and you know, like I said, earn my keep. So, I'm really excited. Um, I hopefully, you know, they know, uh, you know, they know, they know that I, you know, I, I really like to play Mike. So, we'll see. But at the end of the day, I'm just ready to get out there. You feel like uh, communication is a strong point of yours when it comes to that position as well. Uh, say it again. You said, "Do I feel communication?" Yeah, just uh, as far as Mike. yeah, and like Mike and all that. You know, you got to communicate. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, communication is you know that's the biggest. That's probably one of the biggest things as a linebacker is making sure you communicate whether it's to the front or the back end or you know to the guy next to you. Making sure everybody's on the same page. Um, I think a guy that I like to watch who did that a lot was Luke Keekley. Um, he's a great communicator with with the throughout his defense. You know, um, ID and stuff. Uh, anything he saw, he would he wouldn't keep it a secret. You know, he would tell the rest of the guys, and I feel like uh, that that makes you you know um, more appreciated uh, having you out there on the field, and then it just brings value and it shows that you know you really know what you're doing out there. So I'm looking to just build on that, you know, and be one of the loudest guys if I have to. So as a as a obviously as a communicator, you say Luke Kickley. How about as a player? Are there any 
linebackers that you've watched kind of modeled your game after? Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot. Right now, I would say Fred Warner just because of, you know, the way the game is today and how it's played. Um, his ability to whether, you know, they want him to line up and rush or they want him to line up and, you know, drop back in coverage or, you know, whether he's, uh, he's he's you know, moving sideline to sideline, um, flowing through traffic and making plays, making TFL. So I feel like the versatility he has is something that I try to mirror my game after. Um, I want to be somebody who doesn't have to come off the field, uh, somebody who can make plays at crunch time, somebody who can, you know, uh, when the time is, you know, when it's time to make a play, like they're looking at, you know, you look, they're looking at you. And so I kind of want to be that guy. And so I remember my game um, after Fred, uh, you know, De DeMario is one guy that I feel like is really, he's a really heavy, he's a bigger guy. So he's a lot more uh, physical and he's violent uh, than, you know, a lot of linebackers out there. And I think that is what I really love. And that's what I'll try to, you know, try to put in my game as well. So um, I'm just really excited. I get a chance to, you know, learn from a guy that I've been watching on film. And so it's pretty crazy. It's real. How do you feel about the way that the linebacker position has changed over time? Yeah, um, you know, I think I think the biggest thing is that uh, no matter, you know, how much the game changes, I feel like you'll need a linebacker out there just because of um, – the things that they do or the things that they're willing to do. Um, a lot of positions don't do it or they just aren't comfortable with it. And so I feel like um, although the game has evolved to something where it's more spread out, you know, they like guys that can move and uh, you don't have to be as big anymore. You know, they don't own defense. And so I think uh, linebackers that one position that um, is kind of it'll evolve. And I think uh, linebackers just evolve with it. And so, like I was saying, you know, they don't look for guys that are just strictly you know run stoppers anymore they look for linebackers that can you know blitz that can rush the passer that can draw back in coverage that can you know cover backs on man to man and so I feel like um as I you know evolve my game now um I feel like I can accomplish all those things and you know be a player that can do all of it and so uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to uh, perfect my craft moving forward have you been to New Orleans previously do you are you familiar with the area yeah, so uh, so my 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 dad's side of the family is from Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, uh, he he grew uh, he kind of was in New Orleans for a little bit before he moved to Texas. Uh, so I do have a lot of family in Louisiana. Um, New Orleans specifically. Uh, the last time I was there was actually January when we played Washington in the you know the college playoffs. So um, I'm I'm a little familiar with the area. Um, you know, it's not too far from where I'm at. So. I'm really excited to, you know, to to be I'm still in the South. Um, and I know New Orleans is an amazing city. I love the culture. I love the people. So I'm really excited to just to kind of embrace it and, you know, be a part of it. Uh, I love I love the, you know, who that um, all that stuff. So I'm really excited and a great fan base. And I'm just glad I get to be a part of it. Sounds like you'll fit in with your music taste a little bit, too, with uh, was it young boy and Wayne on your playlist. <laughs> yeah so Lil, Lil Wayne for sure Lil Wayne is my guy um my you know my my I guess they call it like you know pump up song or whatever mm -hmm. um it's uh it's any any Lil Wayne you know I think uh, I'm probably gonna go with you know uh I'll go Carter 3 or Carter 2 one of those um is my top one top albums but um Lil Wayne is definitely somebody I'm listening to before the game and so you know I'm hoping to you know meet him one day maybe out there you never know so um I'm excited though did you know he's a Packers fan, though? He's a Packers fan. <laughs> you might change. You can change. Uh, you I didn't know that, but I don't, I don't think that. I don't think that matters. No, no, no. I'm not gonna <laughs>